Hello and welcome to my channel, I'm Windaloos Gaming. In today's video, we're having a this type of challenge-ish video between the four new transformative reactions in Dendro Impact. So with the advent of so many more reactions thanks to patch 3.0 and Dendro's release, I've had the burning question of which of these new reactions is the strongest. Now I did say transformative reactions earlier because, let's be real, we all know that spread and aggravate are the current strongest Dendro reactions and scale like crazy with gear and money spent. More interestingly, how do the other Dendro reactions, Burning, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon, perform in comparison to each other in multiple different scenarios, ranging from single target to AoE? But really quick, it's time to pay some bills, and today's sponsor is Divine W Perfect Wonderland. Divine W is a free to play open world MMORPG with a massive map of more than 60,000 square kilometers to explore and immerse yourself in. From pristine forests to traditional cities, and godly realms. Divine W is sure to amaze you with its aesthetics. There are also eight different professions to choose from. Smash your enemies with your fists or annihilate your enemies with a freaking umbrella. You're sure to find the perfect class for your playstyle. Each profession has both a normal and a magical form to challenge classic phantom beasts and oriental folklore. But wait! Epic and intense battles aside, you can turn off sweaty gamer mode to participate in the plenty of relaxing activities throughout Divine W. Take a serene boat ride through the gorgeous cities, enjoy the multitude of festivals throughout, and heck, you can even get married to your one true beloved. Divine W is available completely free on both Android and iOS. Just smash that link down below to download now to get an SSR roll and then log in to get 1 billion diamonds. Also follow the official Facebook page for a chance to win an iPhone 14 Pro Max, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. Huge thanks to Divine W for sponsoring today's video. So to figure out which Dendro reactions are the best in certain scenarios, I set out to create a this type of challenge-ish video that compares these transformative reactions to each other in various scenarios. And I also set some basic ground rules. First, there is a lot of character overlap in this video. And for the most part, the builds of those characters will be as similar as possible between the different teams. All the characters are built to be focused on elemental mastery and energy recharge. My goal is for as much damage as possible to be coming from the reactions reactions and not from the raw multipliers of the characters. Of course, even despite my best efforts, characters are still going to do plenty of damage. But alas, what can I do about that? The next rule is to try my best to stick to only 4 star characters and the traveler, except for one team with Kokomi and also one scenario where Venti is used for an AoE showcase. As usual, I do each scenario a few times and take the best time from each attempt and scenario. The times on the screen are in seconds and frames. And finally, please take everything with a giant grain of salt. The first scenario for our grassy reactions to grow through is the single target punching bag, I mean boss fight, the Primo Geovish app. Since there are four teams, I'm going to show two at a time because showing all four at the same time is way too cluttered, starting with burning on the left and fridge on the right. Unsurprisingly, Burning is going to struggle against a single target, and in fact, Burning is cheating a bit because of the swirls that are also doing quite a bit of damage as well. Of course, Burning damage counts as pyro damage, so swirling it for Viridus and Veneer is of utmost importance in order to maximize his damage. Since Burning ticks, I believe, 4 times a second, and the highest ticks we saw in this clip were at 2816 damage, that's a lot of Burning ticks required to take out our Primo Geofishep friend who has over 600,000 hit points. Also, it's worth noting 
noting that there are two Dendro characters here because the limiting aura is the Dendro aura by far, since Pyro stays on the enemy even after burning runs out, and we have to keep applying Dendro to the enemy to keep burning active. Burning took an agonizingly long 52.87 seconds to finish off the Primo Geo Vishap. Next we have the Fridge Comp, which is pretty much entirely focused on the Dendro Core explosion damage. This team consists of Kokomi, Dendro Traveler, Kolei, and Diona. Diona's Constellation 6 provides a very juicy 200 element to master, which is amazing for this team. Since Kokomi is the main triggerer of the blooms, she is stacked with over 1000 element to mastery, and I try to keep her on field. Anyway, this team struggles against single targets due to the fact that it's not able to create more than one bloom at a time. The main goal of this team is to create more than five blooms so that the earlier blooms explode, doing damage consistently after the fifth one is created. Each bloom deals a decent amount of damage, with some hitting as high as 27,000 damage. I think the free team did quite well and really crushed the burning team in terms of performance. Our next showcase is between Hyper Bloom and Burgeon. Let's see how teams focused on Hyper Bloom and Burgeon damage perform against the Primo Geo Bishop. All right, I know what some of you are going to say. The primogen vision for the hyper bloom is hydro. Well, out of multiple runs, even with ones against other elements, this one against the Hydro Primo Vishap was by far the fastest, even though it reduced Ching Cho's very low damage a bit lower. Remember, I built these teams to do as little raw elemental damage as possible, and focus entirely on elemental mastery and energy recharge for the characters. I don't think it's too surprising that the fastest team between all four teams ended up being the Hyper Bloom team. What's remarkable about this is that this Hyper Bloom team didn't even get any help from a shield. The Burgeon team was honestly not that far behind, but due to the nature of Pyro and Dendro, you definitely end up with less blooms to work with. Also, Toma's shield came into play some of Diona's shield, which did provide this team a significant advantage. It's also worth noting that the Primo Geo Bishop was Pyro, which hurts Toma's team's damage output, so I guess it kind of balances out with the Hydro on the Hyper Bloom team. Anyway, based on these few runs, Hyper Bloom clocked in the fastest and without any shields at 21.78 seconds and burning the slowest at an agonizingly long 52.87 seconds. Let's move on to our second scenario, a hybrid between AoE and single target damage, 12-1-1. Alas, another tragic scenario for our burning team. What's doubly sad about burning here is that it also got a lot of damage from the swirls from Sucrose. However, not even Sucrose's incredible suction was able to blow them ahead of the much cooler Fridge team on the right. It took this burning team 107 seconds, which isn't even within the recommended 9 star time of 90 seconds. 
Meanwhile, the fridge team felt quite good to use here. Keeping these two otherwise fairly annoying meandering robots frozen next to each other was as pragmatic as it was powerful. However, after the disposal of two robot friends, we are once again greeted by this team's weakness, a single target. Nonetheless, this fridge bloom damage focused team crushed this in comparison to the burning team with a blistering fast 66.85 seconds. Now let's take a look at both Hyperbloom and Burgeon in 1211 and see how they compare. Well, something quite interesting happened here. While Burgeon was slower in the end for the full chamber, it was much faster than Hyperbloom for clearing out the first two robots. Looking at this chart so far, we can see that Fridge and Hyperbloom were the two most competitive times at nearly 67 seconds. However, if we look at only the first wave of 1211, or just when the first pair of robots died, we can see that Fridge was by far the fastest at 29.87 seconds, with Burgeon being in second place at 36.28 seconds, just for killing the first two robots. Hyperbloom was significantly slower at killing the first two robots, taking 49.23 seconds. However, Hyperbloom's clearly superior single target damage allowed it to catch up and squeak ahead of the other runs in this showcase. Of course, to no one's surprise by now, Burning didn't stand a chance against the trio of Bloom-related reactions. We have one last quick showcase and that is the AoE potential against Ventied Up mobs in 12-2-1. Yet again, burning is taking its sweet time. Honestly, it felt like swirl damage and my pathetically built character's raw elemental damage still did more work than burning did here. There's a lot of difficulty with maintaining burning due to the way it works. As for Fridge, this quickly turned into a single target scenario against the last remaining Mirror Maiden. Unfortunately, there just isn't a great chamber for a bunch of groupable bulky targets to venti up for an actual proper AoE showcase. Next, we have Hyperbloom and Burgeon.
both Hyperbloom and Burgeon did very well here, finishing this within frames of each other at around 29 seconds. Although for Hyperbloom, I think Electric Charge plus Double Swirls also did a lot of work for this team. But given that those are complementary transformative reactions with this team, I guess it's fine and I decided to include it. Virgin luckily managed to keep both the Sassin Mage and the Mirror Maiden alive, which actually benefited it, allowing this team to create more cores at once and thus more Virgins against the final enemies. Then with a flashy Toma flip, Virgin's AoE damage cleanly cleaned out 12-2-1 in 28.98 seconds. So there we go, a highly flawed but in my opinion still interesting comparison between the four sources of transformative dendro damage. Again, spread and aggravate were not included in terms of side-by-side -side comparisons against the others for obvious reasons. My goal was to try to maximize purely transformative reaction damage, and arguably perhaps a better test would have been to actually build these characters to do real damage but limited to 4-star weapons. If that's something you'd rather see, let me know down in the comments below. Because of course team damage and how much damage characters like Xing Cho do is extremely important, and this would also allow us to compare spread and aggravate as well. Now, these sets of runs are what I would describe as vanilla dendro reaction, or what we can do with the starting group of characters as of patch 3.0 and these dendro reactions. I fully expect future characters to be based around some of these transformative reactions and completely change this pecking order. Going into this, I felt that Hyperbloom was the strongest and the smoothest to use, obviously before I did any of the comparisons. This is largely thanks to how reliable of a Hyperbloom activator Kuki Shinobu is, not needing her burst and having amazing uptime. Now what was a real surprise to me was Fridge's performance. Due to the EM buffs from this team, Kokomi was creating some seriously damaging blooms, and with multiple targets and freeze. This allowed her team to root them in place and then create tons of blooms to blow them up. The Fridge team was the fastest at disposing the first two robots in 1211, which is a really impressive victory and definitely a sleeper pick in this competition. As for burning, I was expecting it to be bad and it certainly was, losing in every category even with the help from Swirl Damage, but I was actually surprised by just how bad it was. Virgin was roughly what I expected, doing good AoE damage and having some pretty satisfying explosions, but having some consistency and uptime issues due to the combination of elements as well as Toma being the Virgin activator, needing his burst to be available. Overall though, I enjoyed making this video and relying purely on the new transformative reactions for damage. Let me know what you think about these test results down below. And don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Divine W, as they make these types of videos possible. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went To Lose, signing out.